Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line, Daniel Mini T. Williams was taking on Hue Botello at 135 pounds at 1FC, March 24th. Mate, so MMA, uh, you've spent the last couple of fights in MMA. Back to Muay Thai, still with 1FC, why back to Muay Thai? Yeah, well, MMA has always been my end goal with martial arts, which is why I stopped Muay Thai to pursue an MMA career. But getting that call up with the Rod Tang fight and doing Muay Thai again, man, that just sparked that interest again. And you know what? I'm on a platform where I can do all sports. They really market the kickboxing Muay Thai MMA. So I made it clear that I want to do all sports. Keep it interesting in life, man. And it's just cool to be able to switch between the codes. And yeah, I've always wanted a Muay Thai fight after that Rod Tang one. Now that I'm in my weight division, that I feel there's guys that can really just, yeah, knock on the head. And um, yeah, so we didn't get that shot last year, but the first fight of this year is now Muay Thai. So yeah, stoked to be able to do it. Can you still feel like you can be the best in the world at Muay Thai? 100%. That's why I um, wanted to switch back. I was just watching the division and I just feel there's a lot of holes in some of these guys' games. And, um, you know, caught out the champ last year. He's keen to fight, so that's on my radar. So I've got to make the stepping stones to get there as well. So it's almost like... Now I want to do Muay Thai, I want to do kickboxing and MMA is still the end goal because there's still a lot of work I want to do there. And um, yeah, it's just cool to be able to switch back really. Now you've had a couple of fights in 1FC and I think it's really important to break down to everyone. Uh, after you had an absolute almost fight of the year with Rod Tang, who is basically like at some kind of way without the trash talk, the Conor McGregor of, of, of Muay Thai, like he's, he's one of the biggest names. People were wondering how you got that fight. And it's a pretty interesting story. <laughs> yeah, man. The hundred percent truth is I was pissed at the pub one night. It was through that COVID era, you know, pubs only just opened up again and I wasn't doing much for the last year and a half apart from, sort of just being unhealthy, not really training. It's kind of like everyone's the same, you know, what the hell's going on. And I just thought, you know what? I think one championship is still doing fights and they're doing it in Thailand, which was my thought, but it wasn't in Singapore. And I'm a Thai citizen. So I'm going to hit them up and tell, let them know, you know, I can actually get into that country. If you need fighters, let's do it. So I've seen their email, their like fight interest on their website. Don't know what I read that day. I wish I, I knew what I read because it'd be cool to see it. And then forgot about it. Obviously, it was a blinder of the night. And then 10 days later, I pretty much got the call up. It's like, hey, can you please get in contact with us? Walking the dog at the time. And I, I turned to my missus, like, holy shit, this is one championship. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if they offered me Rod Tang? And then two minutes into the call, that's exactly what it was. I'm like, fuck. Oh, well, yeah, I got nothing to lose. Let's do it. Like, why? Because that, that's the equivalent. Like, to put that into... MMA, that's like the equivalent of calling the UFC and they give you John Jones. Well, they were desperate, man, because he was a, he was a big draw of the card. And um, it was just having, with the COVID issues, getting like people in from certain countries when the level of whatever um, scale that the disease was there, um, then countries weren't allowed to get into Singapore. So his original opponents were from the UK and their level went higher. So they were desperate for a fighter. And, um, you know, the perfect timing, you know, a bit of destiny there, like with my email and then, you know, let's get Dan in, see if he's available. And um, there was still, it was always humming and hiring with it though. because It was like four weeks before the actual event. They're like, look, we want you to fight Rod Tank, but we, there still might be a chance his original opponent can get in. So what we'll do, we're going to match you up with someone else and then we'll just see how things go. And then, um, yeah, then originally they... Match there after that, they matched me with someone and then they changed it. So, yep, the UK people can get in now. So, I'm like, all right, sweet. Okay, I'm fighting this Russian dude. And then, literally, the two weeks before that, it was just like, ah, oh, actually, we really need you for Rod Tanger. Like, yep, sweet. Let's do it. I had nothing to lose, man. I absolutely wasn't fighting for a couple of years. I was a bit of a piss in, like, just a bit lost. And I needed that kick up the ass. And I'm like, you know what? I'm straight to the top. Let's do it. No one expects me to win. So, there's absolutely no pressure. In fact, the pressure's on him because it would be like awful for him if he just lost to this nobody at the time. So, yeah, it's just cool how it works. I just knew I just had to give him a good fight and then I was set. So, and they were pretty happy with that. As long as I came forward, they even said it to me. like, we want you to fight a good fight. Like, you know, all these other opponents run away from him. I'm like, I can't do that anyway. Even if I am getting slaughtered, like, I'm going to have to walk forward. So, 
<laughs> yeah, it took a few knocks from him, but yeah, it was good to know that I could still hang with him and um, yeah, just set the path. But you know what? I'm going to do Muay Thai again in my division, get the title. I'm still going to do MMA because that's what uh, one championship you can do. And now I'm thinking, why the fuck do I do that? Because like, it's actually quite hard switching codes, eh? You like you concentrate <laughs> on one skill and then you're like, now I'm going back to Muay Thai. I'm like, man, I was so sloppy. I went to Thailand for a couple of weeks and that really built up my uh, skill level again. So I got the confidence back. And now it's like when I switch back to MMA, it's been like, oh, shit, man. I haven't really been doing much grappling or anything. But yeah, oh, well, just just make it hard for yourself and take the challenge. I mean, it's not like you were the most uh, consistent jiu-jitsu athlete on the, in <laughs> MMA anyway. Yeah, that's going to change now. Soon. After the last one, it's like you just, you're just going to get found out. You're going to be good everywhere. So. Well, well, that's the thing I, I wanted to ask you about is in, in MMA, uh, obviously it's still the dream. Like where do you feel you sit? I guess even in the world in, in bantamweight or flyweight in, in MMA? Well, in strawweight, I can say I'm definitely in the top 10 or top five. That's where I'm positioned in uh, one championship. Um, and there's no real other division or big promotion that uses that division. So I can take that scout. But in the flyweight division, man, like I would say top 100. Like that's where I feel like I'd be somewhere in there. Just Just got to keep working on it. That's all. And I've got time, man. I understand that there's a lot more I can do. And, um, yeah, that, that's the goal, just to make it like a daily routine, not like this couple times a week, fucking let's go hit the mats and try to get PTs instead of doing the round. So good little wake-up call when you're at the top level and you just don't want to let things escape now. I mean, you've been doing this since you were like a, a, a kid. Um, what's the what's the division you want in MMA? Is it is it 115? Is it is it like what's it's, the... what, it's 125? So it's 125, but why the straw weight? So straw yeah, weight, they just because they bump it right up. Like the thing with one championship is like I am 125, yeah. so it's the same as the flyweight division in the UFC. Except they trying to get rid of the whole weight cut thing, so they make sure you're hydrated. You know, a lot of the other promotions, you can get super dehydrated, put seven kilos back on after. But in one championship, you can't put on 5% more after your weigh-in. So you can, but you get penalized, man. So I literally, if I weigh 125 pounds, which is what, 56.7 on the scales of weigh-in, after the fight, the first thing you do when you go to the medic room is jump on the scales and they record it. And if I'm over 59.5, what's that, like 130, 130 yeah. pounds or whatever, um, first time's a warning. And if you do it again, you lose 25% of your purse, Oof. big. And then if you do it a second time or a third time, um, you get banned from that division and you have to give 35% of your purse. So it's not really worth trying to do the whole cheating, the hydration thing all the time because you literally can't be 5% over your weigh-in after the fight jeez and um talking about your next fight are you like are you going to continually jump back from muay thai to mma or have you got a plan nah man i think just yeah just keep jumping back keep sharpening all the skills it's just it gives more availability for me to fight as well and um at the moment i'm happy with being able to jump forward you know i think the next one could very well be mma again um, I do want a rematch with the last guy. So I'm going to, yeah, been, I've been asking for that. And, um, yeah, but I also want the title for Muay Thai. But I think that that will come eventually as well. It's like no urgency there. It's just I do want to keep working on my MMA. After, yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of work there. So it, it would be good to get an MMA fight after just to yeah. keep, keep those skills coming rather than being too long in Muay Thai, keep boxing, but, Hey, if they offer me a title shot, then I'm obviously going to take it in the striking sports. And that's what I was going to ask. Well, like, are you are you tied to one FC now? Can you come back and fight in Australia, or what's the what's the deal? Yeah, I'm, I'm tied to one. Like, I uh, just my contract, and that's where I want to be as well, man. It's where a bit more, yeah. Obviously, they they're, they're building me a little bit as well. Like one of their top sort of athletes, where they want to keep me on their main cards out of their top 40 or top 50 or whatever. So um, it's just more opportunities for me there. But it's, you know, like you can get be in one championship and still fight other promotions, but they have the final say. But they kind of like have their 
sort of top athletes where they were just obviously you're tied to them and they wouldn't let you fight anywhere else because they want to build you up as well, do like articles and stuff that yeah. they're putting in the work for you. So they're not going to want you to try to build up another platform or anything. Okay. But yeah, you have a couple of losses, then it's just kind of like, hey, I want to fight in Australia. They're like, yeah, all right, sweet. <laughs> uh, okay, so basically after the Rod Tang fight, did you feel that they went, no, we're going to we're gonna turn you into a, into a bit of a star or did you have to get a few wins under your belt? Well, yeah, they were kind of like, we want to see you back. We understand you were doing MMA and it's awesome. So when I had the next MMA fight and I got the win there, so they're like, hey, we want to, yeah, we want to um, get, get, we want you to fight whenever you want to kind of thing, build you up. So, yeah, awesome. Um, and uh, how realistically, how far away do you think you are from from a legit title shot in one FC? Yeah, I, I reckon not this fight, probably not the next one, and then the one after that. But yeah, one or two fights away, man. I think after this uh, striking, if I win this, then the next fight can very well be a title shot for Muay Thai, or it should be really. There's yeah, there's. The guy, if I meet this guy, should definitely be a title shot after that. But yeah, most likely could be doing MMA as well because the champ as well, he's got like, he just fought Rod Tang. Mm. He went up into this, so he's probably got another six months till he fights again. So I understand that. So it'd be good to get like MMA or a kickboxing fight just before doing that title shot as well. Yeah, cool. But hey, I, I gotta fucking win this next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, just gloss it yeah. over. That's how we do yeah. in Australia, though. You with Muay Thai, we're just like, yeah, me too, win that. But uh, we're just like, ah, <laughs> yeah, move it on. Uh, no, um, look, I will catch up with you in in uh, the very near future, and we'll have a, a long form chat and talk about some of the uh, delinquent things we've gotten up to in our youth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I just want to speak a lot. <laughs> I just wanted to finish yeah. it off with. Mate, after it's all said and done, how does Daniel Mini T. Williams want to be remembered in combat sports? I want to be the dude that's won three titles in different sports, man, and then inspire like the next generation to be able to do that as well and not just focus on the one martial arts. Like, I mean, pretty crazy, but it just opens up a lot of avenues, different way of thinking, and I just feel like anything's possible. And no one's done that in this division, so I just want to be able to be the guy to do that, which leads the next wave because, yeah, there's cool things happening in martial arts in the world and I think kids need to get into it and, yeah, let's help the next generation out. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Uh, Daniel Mini T. Williams on Instagram and, of course, check out Altered State Floats uh, if you want to become fresh after he kicks you in the head. Daniel Mini T. Williams, <laughs> well, best of luck, mate, and I'll uh, chat to Very you when you get the win. Thanks for having me on, brother. Legend. <laughs>